All right, by popular demand, iPhone Studio Setup. High quality video, high quality audio, external monitor. You can run it completely off the grid or off of battery power, and you can simultaneously charge all the components while shooting video. So let's check this baby out. iPhone right in the middle. Down here, iPhone case with a magnetic plate right there. Because this here power bank connects to the iPhone case via this magnet. Two ports, one for the phone, one for the HDMI dongle. Ulancy ST02S silver version. Best smartphone grip I know of. Belkin Lightning 2 4 pole audio and lightning charging adapter. If you want to hook up camera microphones that use a 3 pole jack, you will have to use this Rode. 3 pole to 4 pole adapter cable. USB charging for the phone via the power bank and the Belkin adapter. Field World Master MA5 5 inch field monitor. Two plastic cable clamps right here for cable management. Generic headphones for audio monitoring. HDMI dongle to mirror the smartphone screen to the field monitor or really any device that features an HDMI input. Let's check out how this works. It's pretty simple. As soon as the dongle is supplied with power, you will see a menu appear on the field monitor screen or any monitor you hook this up to. It'll take a while, but as soon as it's done, up here you will see the name and the password of the Wi-Fi signal the dongle puts out. Now all that's left to do is come to settings, go to Wi-Fi and look for that name. Connect, enter the password, select join, exit settings, swipe from the top right corner, go to screen mirroring and once again select the dongle's Wi-Fi signal. And there you go. Screens are mirrored. Whoops. So as soon as you hit an app that has landscape mode, you're good to go. Lag is there, but it's minimal. No problem really in a studio-like environment. This also works, of course, with much larger screens, which in a studio is an awesome way to set up an external monitor. Now, before we move on, let's put this thing together real quick. Power bank seems to be pretty close to the cameras, but it won't show up in either the field of view of the tele lens or that of the wide angle lens. Another bit of cable management on the back side of the HDMI dongle. Again, I'm using one of the tiny cable clamps. And there we go. Audio options. Option number one. Audio-Technica ATR3350 lavalier mic with an extremely long cable which in a studio situation actually is a great benefit. It's a three pole jack, which means we have to use the Rode adapter cable. It has its own on and off switch and it runs off of one of those tiny five volt batteries. Perfect fit for this setup. Let's check out an audio sample. So this is the audio sample for the Audio-Technica ATR3350 lavalier mic that I'm using right now. Because of its extremely long cable, it's perfect for setups like this, where you use a tele lens and are situated relatively far from the camera. It's absolutely no problem to hook it up to the setup, in specific the Rode 4 pole to 3 pole adapter, then it goes into the Belkin adapter, then it goes into the iPhone. So it's really pretty plug and play and there's not much you have to worry about. Second option, Mic W's iGo Mic Mini Shotgun Edition. Once again, three pole jack, meaning we again have to use the Rode adapter cable. Very important, any kind of microphone you use that is placed very close to the setup itself needs to have RFID shielding, hence a metal casing, because the phone 
connects to the field monitor or any other monitor via the dongle that puts out a pretty strong 5G signal. So if the microphone doesn't have RFID shielding or a metal casing, it will pick up a lot of RFID interference and that is noticeable on the audio track. For this little champ, it's no problem at all because it is shielded, which makes it a perfect fit for this setup as far as tiny shotgun mics go. So let's check out an audio sample. Alright, so here's the audio sample for the Igo Mic Mini Shotgun from Mic W. Now, the quality isn't as good as with the lavalier microphone, but that has multiple reasons. Number one, you're further away from the microphone because it sits on the setup itself, not as close as your collar, obviously. On the other hand, with this one, I'm free to go wherever I please, whereas with the lavalier, I'm <laughs> kind of connected or stuck with the setup. So it's more hassle to just up and leave and come back with the lavalier compared to the shotgun microphone. Then again, because it's further away, this one will collect more echo and overall your voice isn't going to sound as full as with the lavalier microphone. So there's pros and cons to both microphones. Still, I think this especially is a great option for the setup because it's really compact and has a metal housing, so it's RFID shielded. So you can place it as close to the setup as you want and it will not pick up any of the RFID interference between phone and monitor. Now if this were the distance you shot from, about half of what it was before, this is the kind of quality you could expect from the Igo Mic Mini Shotgun from Mic W. Much closer, much less echoey and overall excellent quality. Then again, the wide angle aesthetic is very different from the tele aesthetic. So that might be a trade-off you have to keep in mind. Anyway, that's it for the Igo Mic Mini Shotgun from Mike W. So to wrap this video up, here's a quick overview of all the steps I took to create the shot that you're watching right now. One main light source, video light with a softbox, 45 degrees to the left, about 30 degrees up. Inside the Filmic Pro app, the first thing that I did was choose the tele lens over the wide angle lens because I think it makes for a nicer studio shot. I shoot at 4K, 24 or 25 frames per second using the Filmic or Filmic Extreme quality option because it's a noticeable upgrade over the regular M bit rate the iPhone usually shoots with. Inside the audio menu, I make sure headset microphone is selected. PCM 44.1 or 48 kilohertz, both options will give you really good audio. I do not use voice processing or automatic gain control. As far as focusing is concerned, I make sure the autofocus area is placed right on my face. And then I usually dial in the exposure manually via touch and drag, because the iPhone does have a tendency to overexpose brighter areas like this, for example, if you don't pay attention. And that's how I set up a shot like this. However, the main reason I use the Filmic Pro app or a third-party app is simply that once the screen is mirrored to the field monitor or any kind of monitor really, the standard camera app of the iPhone won't go into landscape mode. The Filmic Pro app, however, will. And that's really imperative for using any kind of monitor because portrait mode doesn't get us far. Now, another cool thing, if you don't want to go the Filmic Pro route, Let's say you already have a field monitor that has features like focus peaking, false color and aspect ratio overlays and such. You could just use a third party app for video recording, hook up the field monitor and use its pro features on that standard camera app. Because whatever features your field monitor offers, you can now use it with any camera app that goes into landscape mode once the iPhone mirrors its screen to that monitor. So main problem with a studio setup like this, one lightning connector, but you would like to have external microphone, external monitor, and somehow charge all the components while shooting so you can just keep going if you need to. I hope I have solved all these problems to your satisfaction. If you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. And I will probably also create a kit on kit.com so you can check out all the parts right there. As always, thank you so much for your time 
Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.